So I am I'm very excited about what today offers. And I'm I'm going to a meeting tonight with the Justice Foundation that it's centered upon the Online Harms Act because we need to hear more about this. But I want you guys to hear this fantastic quote from Conservative leader Pierre Polyev, who was at the Canada Strong and Free Convention today. That's the old Manning Center conference. And unfortunately, I'm not there today. This would have been unimaginable eight years ago. Unimaginable. It would have been unimaginable eight years ago, before Justin Trudeau, to think that not only would he pass a law to control what you can see and say on the internet, but the, the, he would then pat, put forward another law which could put you under house arrest or a peace bond under suspicion of something unacceptable, you might say, in the future. You know, this guy, if he read, if he had read 1984, he would have thought it was an instruction manual <laughs> and not a warning. <laughs> Fortunately, there is an outbreak of common sense across the country. Yes, I think it was just yesterday or the day before, General Hillier said that he, the thing he hears the most often when he walks around the streets of this country is, this is not Canada. We don't recognize this place. And that's what I hear from fifth, everything from fifth generation Canadians to uh, immigrants who arrived here 10 years ago, they say, my God, what happened to this country in the last eight years? Do you imagine if you had been in a coma in 2015 and woke up to this nightmare, uh, how unfamiliar it would all seem? But the good news, my friends, is that life was not like this before Justin Trudeau, and it won't be like this after he's gone. And so he defined Canada and its nationality the following way. He said, Canada is free and freedom is its nationality. Now, <laughs> Diefenbaker would later sign the Bill of Rights and on it he would write, I am a Canadian, a free Canadian, free to speak without fear, free to worship God in my own way, free to stand for what I think right, free to oppose what I believe wrong. This heritage of freedom I pledge to uphold for myself and all of mankind. Both of them believed in our ancient liberties, liberties that we had inherited and that had been passed down over 800 years from 1215, the Magna Carta, all the way to then and to now. Liberties that they believed for, for which they were the custodians they were simply, they were not the owners of that liberty, they were simply the guardians whose job it was to take the torch and pass it on, as Edmund Burke explained, a contract between the yet, the, the, the dead, the living, and the yet to be born. They understood, thank you very much, Roy. Dr. Roy gave me a round of applause there. Uh, thank you, Roy. Speaking of nonpartisanship, I'll be conservative in my remarks if you be liberal in your applause, all right? Um, but thank you, Dr. Roy. And they, understood, they weren't there to reinvent the universe. They didn't, thought, they didn't think that they were the living embodiment of God, that they could engineer humans and populations and re recreate some brave new world. They were here to inherit the great gifts that ancestors before them had passed down. And they understood that Canada wasn't perfect, just as we look back at our history today and acknowledge it wasn't perfect. And you know what, though? Whenever we have gone wrong, it is because we have gotten away from those basic principles of human freedom and in favored too much state coercion and control, not the other way around. So all I can say is three cheers for that. We need, and Polyev has given, his unequivocal opposition today to the Online Harms Act. He's going to fight it. I'm not taking any credit for that. I was hoping he was just biding his time until he could make that declaration because he needed to do that. I'm glad he's finally done it because that is what we need to hear in Canada. 
Canadians need to know that the opposition, the official opposition, at least one party in the House of Commons is opposed to the Online Harms Act. And it's very important that Pierre Pauly have stand up and make that very clear. And you know how we feel about that here. And like I said, we're going to be interviewing John Carpe of the Justice Foundation tonight because he's holding a town hall meeting in West Ottawa, CARP actually, to talk about how we're going to mobilize opposition to the Online Harms Act, which is essentially the gag in your mouth act, the house imprisonment, house arrest for thought crimes, life imprisonment for so-called hate speech. I can tell you this might happen in dictatorships, but it's not going to happen in Canada as long as we still live and breathe. And we've got people like you, viewers, who are watching. Thank you for watching this episode of Stand on Guard and being a part of the Creighton's Right channel. If you've watched this episode to this point, you've watched it all. And that's really important for a small station like this. We always say subscribe, hit the bell, be a part of the Creighton resistance. Resolve to resist. That's what we're doing. And if you become a subscriber, if you're a supporter of this station or a member through Substack, through YouTube, and now you can be a local as well, that's so important to us because I couldn't do this without you. I made a decision to become an independent journalist about a year ago because I wanted to bring all of my experience in the military, in journalism, to you. I don't promise anything I can't deliver. I don't offer clickbait. I offer truth. The truth is out there. And it's my job to bring that truth to light and to you. Thanks for being a part of the Creighton's Right Resistance. And we'll see you again soon. So we are in a very precarious position in this country. We need a political change, but we also need to resolve to resist.